Is there really a mother lode to be rediscovered in Michigan's beautiful Keweenaw Peninsula? A lost silver mine that's contents consist of untapped silver veins second to none. Is it true or just a figment of one man's wild imagination? This is Richard Kellogg's author of the book, Wall of Silver. A factual account, according to Richard, of his friendship with Jake Stockard, a down and out prospector who accidentally came upon the abandoned mine while camping near a cliff outside of Calumet back in the 30s. One night, a strange draft came from the base of the cliff Stockard had camped by. It led him into an abandoned mine that gleaned with a treasure of silver ore. Reportedly, Stockard jumped the claim and personally mined 17 barrels of silver ore over time, making him a very rich man. According to Richard, Stockard sold the silver to the mafia who paid him in gold coins, which he then stored in the mine. Apparently, now the coins that are still there may be worth a million dollars or more. How does Richard Kellogg know this? Well, he was there. He saw it himself and was literally overwhelmed with the magnitude of its beauty and size. Jake shared his discovery with his friend Richard after the pair came to a mutually beneficial agreement. Jake Stockard befriended Richard Kellogg after Richard retired as an engineer at 43. From GM to move to the UP, Richard and his family made the move to the UP because of facilities available in the Keweenaw for the care of Kellogg's autistic child. To make a living in the rugged UP, Richard purchased the famous sportsman's bar at Crissage. Here is where Richard and Jake first met. The story of the Wall of Silver and a mine that was lost, discovered, then re-lost is a story to many that is just too hard to believe. But when Richard tells the story with dates and facts, it's hard not to believe that there is a mine of such enormous proportions still lost in the wilderness of the Keweenaw. On this edition of Michigan Magazine, we get the chance to visit with Richard Kellogg, who was, as far as we know, along with Jake Stockard, the last living soul alive to have seen and visited the lost silver mine. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today we are in the beautiful community of city, of Traverse City, and we are here at uh, Kings Court Manufactured Home. I am with Richard Kellogg, and uh, we're going to learn more about A Treasure Hunter's Dream. Uh, it's a wall of silver is the title of the book written by Richard Kellogg. And Richard is from Michigan. He lives here in Traverse City now, resides here in Traverse City. And um, Richard, your life, uh, I went through this here. And, uh, you know, usually you start from the beginning. But here we're going to start at the end. All right. And then work the way back. Um, how you left the mine. Uh, you were, the, as far as you know, the last person to ever been in that mine, this lost mine. We call lost mine or eagle, was it Eagle's Mine at one time it was called? At first it was yeah. uh, uh, eagle, eagle, eagle Silver Mine, something yeah. like that. I kind of forget that part a little but bit. But this is all up in the Keweenaw Peninsula, in the beautiful Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Right. To sustain my family and uh, put food on the table, I found myself doing something I never thought I'd ever do. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a famous tavern uh, along US 41, just north of Calumet. And uh, at that time, the miners were on strike. CNH owned the land at that time up there, which consisted of something like a quarter million acres. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, the mines eventually shut down when they couldn't reach an agreement with the miners on higher wages. So uh, to shorten the story and get to the meat of this whole story, the mine shut down. I found myself in bad trouble financially, mm -hmm. near bankruptcy. And in 1971, I heard a car door slam outside the tavern, got behind the bar waiting for my customer. And a, a man that looked like he was from out of the past. <laughs> Walked out of the page of history, eh? Yeah. <clears throat> he uh, had to duck his head to enter the building. That's wow. how tall he was. And uh, he looked at me and kind of half smiled, but continued to follow the outside wall of the tavern, looking at mementos and this sort of thing. And he paused at a, a, a glass encased speckled trout. Mm -hmm. And he gazed at that, and then when he turned to face me coming to the bar, he had a smile on his face. Mm. He reached out his hand, and he says, uh, my name is Jake Stockard. 
I was here the day this place opened. Is that right? And he, first of all, he was dressed so uniquely, it impressed me. Mm -hmm. He was dressed like in a doeskin frontier type suit, full beard that was well groomed. And when he reached out his big hand, <laughs> I could feel that this man was some important person, you know, just from the feeling. Yeah. Well, anyhow, we became good friends because we both liked to stream fish. And uh, when he found out for me that my business was in trouble, he offered some help. By help, I mean he, he came in one day with a footlocker full of silver specimens, raw silver specimens, sparkling rock with mm. beautiful silver. And they were all black at that time because they tarnish and mm -hmm. oxidize, the weather. right. So in, in that box, in that footlocker, he took out a, a, a jeweler's scale, precious metal scale. And I said, what's all this for? And he says, we're going to save your business. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. So uh, as a result, we came to an agreement that we would split 50-50 on the sales. And what he brought you in. Yes. Yeah. And when I realized how valuable they were, after he told me that I could get $15 an ounce for it, I took the offer. And uh, within a short time, I realized my money pouch had over $2,000. Oh, my goodness. So anyhow, from him doing that yeah. for me, I was able to save my business. And like I say, we became very good friends. And certain things went on in the tavern after silver started appearing in my tavern that were outright dangerous. Into our, into our relationship further, I realized that he was 71 years old at the time. And that uh, Jake was? That we met, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wanted to tell his life story because he said he was robbed of being in history. Yeah. And that interested me. What do you mean, you know, and he's told me, he says, I found a lost silver mine in 1927 that made me rich and independently wealthy, and, and uh, but I couldn't tell people what had happened, where the silver came from, or anything else, because I would have went to prison. Hmm. And I asked him, why would you have gone to prison? And he said, well, he said, at the time I was selling this silver illegally to a family in Chicago, which turned out to be an organized crime family. Oh, boy. Yes. He said uh, the federal law wrote that anyone selling a precious metal of uh, monetary value, I believe it was... Silver or gold? Silver or gold, yes, uh -huh. at that time, that uh, they would be subject to extreme fines and, fr and federal imprisonment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why he never could tell his story, because he'd have lost it all and went to prison. My goodness. When you and Jake Stockard went into the mine for the last time, all right. what was it like for you, I mean, to, to, to be there? And I, I read it in here, and it makes me kind of... Yes. Uneasy? Yeah, just chilly-like. Well, believe me, it was the most harrowing experience, yet the most exhilarating experience I've had in my life. I didn't realize the fear that comes over a person when they're possibly trapped in total darkness. Uh huh. And uh, I remember when I backed it, you had to back into the mine because it was sloped downhill. This was a, an escape tunnel. But you guys went out there. You went out there when it was very stormy, the weather was very bad, so nobody would follow you. That's right. So you, because there were people who were watching you. Oh, yes. Even from my tavern, I could sense people would follow me all over, uh -huh. thinking I was going to go to the mine, and they didn't even know I knew where it was. Yeah. 